human rights is afforded to full to the Palestinian people. And these are questions for us all, Madam Deputy Speaker. What would we do if we, if we were being forced for hours each day to go through a military checkpoint because of our race just to get to work? What would we do if one day we woke up and a JCB bulldozers were demolishing our homes or our school? What would we do if we were parents whose child needed urgent cancer treatment, but, what, but we, as well as our child, were denied a permit, permit to access the only hospital where the care they need is available? What would we do if we were worshipping, say in the church, on Christmas Day and we were tied up and beaten and arrested on Christmas morning? What would we do if F-16 firefighter jets blew up the BBC or ITV buildings in central London? What would we do if we were forced to live in the world's largest open-air prison? Minister, what would we do if our home had been satellite by settlers and our child had two options, either to die of suffocation or go outside and be pelted by rocks thrown by settlers? What would we do if NHS ambulance rushing to save lives were routinely being stopped at checkpoints or NHS doctors rushing to care were being shot at? What would we do if we were being subjected to mass collective punishment? These might be hypotheticals for us, but these are not hypotheticals for the people of Palestine living under occupation. This is their daily existence. This is their lived experience, and this is the reality that they cannot escape from. The people of Great Britain would never accept this treatment for any of us. So why do we find it acceptable when it comes to the people of Palestine? If we wouldn't accept it, what do we do to stop this from happening to the Palestinians? 75 years since the Nakba, and no one is able to return home. 50 years of growing Israeli occupation, which no one can seemingly stop. And 16 years of a blockade of Gaza, which has not been lifted, despite the severe humanitarian crisis it has caused for 2 million people. And now, Ramadan after Ramadan, the storming of Al-Aqsa, the third holiest site for Muslims, has become a routine practice for the Israeli military. 